Hello, I'm Generation 3DX, a digital artist uh, working with Dust Studio and also AI animation. In this short video, uh, I'm just going to be looking at first and last frame with one video. So what is first and last frame? It basically, it's kind of what it says it is. It allows you to keyframe your one video, image to video animation uh, by, by putting a start and end frame to force the, force the AI video to produce the transition between the first and the, the last image and obviously with the prompt guiding the action too. So what are the applications for this? Well if you consider that you have a hidden face or a face that's only side on at the start and we've got one here we can see we've got Rebecca and Sansa and you can't see this is Sansa you have no idea really unless you actually really knew the character and then we have a, we have the end image here so for instance if we just had this workflow here we Sansa's face is hidden initially so we can't see uh, one, ha one has no idea what she looks like she can, has, has a pretty good idea of what Rebecca looks like but so what that produces is, is this this uh, this result here and you can see this is not the character so if you if you love your characters then you know if you want to do a face reveal then then this isn't going to work so what you have to do then is to give the information to the to the one video pipeline to say this is what Santa looks like and so when she turns her head voila this is she reveals herself in full faithful character rendition uh, another application is if you uh, want to reveal uh, some anatomical details uh, of a character. Uh, I think you know what I'm getting at. If you want them to do a, a strip, for instance, then do you want to... Uh, if you don't have that, then, then it's going to reproduce the anatomical elements of that character in a way that is not actually those character, that, that character's anatomical elements. So you're not going to get how they look, you know, when they don't have... Um, clothing on or something like that um, so I can't show you that here obviously on YouTube but but that that's uh, that, that's an application where this is a game changer uh, and allows you to fully fully reveal your characters in all their glorious uh, faithful details. another application is, is and you're probably thinking already aha now now I can finally stitch together long sequences uh, where I can keyframe uh, I can keyframe a whole sequence of, I don't know, five or six different videos to produce a 30 second video. Yes, it is possible to do that. However, you're going to find initially, you're going to find immediately the, that um, when you get to the transition points between uh, the, the, the end frame of the first video, which then becomes the first frame of the second video, then you get certain glitches. And the reason for this is, is although because the image is not the entire picture, as you know, with 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 image to video processing and in any video engine, you are talking about not just what the image is, but the actual motion dynamics. And it's the motion dynamics that get lost between the the, the first generation and then the second generation and the third generation. So you can get these glitches. Uh, that occur. You might get lucky sometimes, uh, and you can see this in this sequence I prepared here uh, of uh, Kira, of Kira and Abigail meeting at the subway station. And we can see here that, that there are some transition points between between each clip, where it's a bit glitchy. I mean, it's it's okay. It's it's pretty good. I mean, it's better than nothing, and it's actually not possible to do it unless you unless you have first last frame because you know you can't you simply can't do it from a single image but it's just going to drift horribly into something yeah it's just not possible right so and i'm going to in a, in a future video i'm going to kind of cover how to fix those glitches if to, to do a longer stitching of videos because there are some tools out there uh, it's still on ongoing research on my part but i said i wanted to get this video out today so i'm going to cover that in a future video uh, about how to capture the motion dynamics of the previous segment so that it merges smoothly into the next one so stay tuned for that and 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 once i've done that i i'll link that top right okay uh, so all right so enough enough of that in terms of the um the applications let's just talk quickly talk about this workflow so this is a workflow that I've adapted from one I downloaded on Civit AI I've adjusted it to my own tastes and simplified it somewhat um, the, the, the core of the end the core of the engine here is one first last frame to video 
that is actually a native com this is right, so we're in comfy ui by the way so if you're not using comfy ui then i don't know don't know how to describe what the uh, process will be but swarm ui in theory you can do the same so so this is a native comfy ui node one first last frame to video and it it's pretty simple you just connect uh, you you start and end images to these nodes here and you have your positive and negative prompts and you have your vae which comes from uh, your vae okay and then the outputs are two that you two this is one 2.2 your outputs go into your uh, K samplers for your high high and low noise. Okay, and high and low noise is connected to uh, your high and low noise uh, models. So we've got the one 2.2 high noise and one 2.2 low noise using FPA scaled. And here you have your well, you're using one lightning too. If you're not using one lightning with 2.2, you're crazy because um, it basically speeds things up massively. So you only need to use uh, here I'm using eight steps in total and I find that eight steps is better than the, the, the default four You just get much better quality. That's another subject, but yeah, using eight steps So we end the first uh, and end the high noise at four steps and then we and then we start this the low noise at four steps So you get so it splits it 50 50 right anyway, but that but that's a standard one 2.2 things not not specifically related to a start and end image. Uh, there, uh, there are some other stuff uh, and this workflow, I'm going to have a download on this uh, download link to this workflow uh, on, on the comments uh, on the uh, video description. Uh, so you can download this workflow. Uh, I'll do a this is this is actually using um, Tensor RT for upscaling and interpolation. And that only works if you've got a, uh, a Blackwell 5000 series NVIDIA card. I'll provide an alternative workflow for those that don't have uh, 5000 series cards. Um, but this, this enables lightning fast interpolation and upscaling of your uh, video. Uh, there's also block swapping as well. Uh, I find that block swapping is really, really helpful. Uh, for uh, especially if you've got a lower RAM card, but even with higher RAM cards, it means you can do bigger resolutions and longer videos. So this is really this is just window dressing, really. These these things about um, and then you got your LoRa's here, as I mentioned, uh, and and then but but the core here is this node here, okay. And without this node, you can't do this. So so that is that's the big addition and that's the big change from just regular uh, WAN 2.2 workflows. So one question is how far can you push the uh, transition? Uh, how, how, how different or how similar do the first and last images have to be in order for one to not just explode and, and, and do some really nasty transitions or artifacts? Well, I, I, I think it's actually pretty good. Um, you can see again from, from the initial, uh, from the start, from the opening video sequence I did, uh, the images uh, are relatively similar, but there are some where it does a wild swing. Of, uh, I, I did I just to put, see to push how far I could do a big orbital switch of the camera viewpoint, and I actually did it really well. I thought so. I think the capability of this is actually really quite good. Now, if you are using uh, your, your your seed images from Dad Studio uh, or some or Blender, for instance, you can completely control the lighting, the camera angle, and and so forth, uh, which allows you to control, you know, how how the transition is going to be, and that's actually that's very helpful in terms of maintaining a con consistent look on on your on your first last frame video. So lighting in particular, I think, uh, is if you keep that constant, don't don't just don't move the lights at all. Even if you move the camera, the AI video generation is going to be able to going to be able to understand how the light works and keep it consistent. If you are using text to image for your source video for your source images, it's harder because even if you have your character LoRa loaded in to your text to image engine, then and your character is going to stay consistent. That's great, but the problem is backgrounds. So even with the same seed, if you even using the same image seed uh, for your for your text to, text to image generation, even subtle changes in the prompt, uh, for instance, to do with clothing or, or, or something like that, can cause the background to change as well. So in that situation, what I found for text to image is that you just have to generate a lot of images and find ones that are similar enough where the background is about the same. 
uh, and in that way you can get pretty good pretty good results on, on text to image for your source images but but say if you're using DAZ or Blender or some other 3D application for for your source images that's actually that's the best and it's going to give you the most consistent results okay so that's really it really I don't really have anything else to add to this it's um I say it, it's a it's a pretty simple concept uh, with some really interesting very specific applications mainly say for for revealing faces or for revealing anatomical elements where it absolutely shines and, and, and enables something that is just simply not possible without that and that's it really if you'd like to support my channel uh, then hop over to my Riot Models page where you have uh, exclusive content uh, exclusive paid content that you only get to see the girls in various different states and uh, and then check out my civet ai and deviant art pages and that's it really i'll see you in the next video thanks take care bye bye